Our whole lives we've been taught that debts are to be paid, that they must always be paid. It's almost a moral issue, like a divine decree. But where does this decree then come from? Borrowing and lending has existed for centuries. In ancient Sumer, for example, temples at the time acted as lenders to any farmer who needed an advance on tools, seeds or animals. The debt incurred by these farmers was not charity, it was meant to be paid with interest. And if a bad harvest or a plague made it impossible for these farmers to repay their debt, a family member will be forced into slavery until the full repayment of the loan or until their death. Who made up these temples and where did their power come from? Sumerian temples were run by elite high priests claiming semi-divinity mandated by their gods. They administer Sumerian society in effect governing large swathes of land. Kind of sounds like we refer to today as the establishment, right? From this moment on, interactions of the Sumerian temple have evolved over time into such abstract forms as today's global markets and financial powers who work with governmental institutions to maintain the status quo, impoverizing and subjugating entire societies into the facto forms of slavery. How does all this function? How is this allowed to happen? States finance themselves with public funds, mainly raised through taxes. However, this revenue is often not enough to cover all public spending. This is usually due to fiscal fraud, capital flight, and because big companies and wealth funds are taxed at low rates if they are taxed at all. A scene that is perpetuated and compounded by corruption and waste. In order to deal with this deficit of funding, governments go behind their populations back and borrow money from financial markets and international organizations such as the International Monetary Fund and World Bank and go into debt. And what happens when the temple decides that it's time to collect their debt but the state's revenues are still insufficient to pay it all back? Crisis. Financial powers then pressure governments to impose structural adjustments policies under the pretense of paying off the borrowed money. These are the famous austerity measures we have heard so much about. They reduce spending on health, education and other social programs. This not only degrades public services, it worsens the quality of life of large segments of the population. This is how debt work as mechanism of control and oppression, weakening the exercise of popular sovereignty. At the same time, labor protections are weakened and retire age is increased and previously public sectors such as energy, communications or health are privatized under the claim that private management is more efficient than thus cheaper. It's the perfect excuse to give a few what belongs to all of us. Meanwhile, private banks announce they are bankrupt, hollowed out by their own shareholders and CEOs who pocketed enormous sums of money made through high-risk investments. When this situation collapses, the population at large is blamed because we live above our means. So the temple decides that the bank's depravity must be paid by society and thus converts the bank's privately incurred debt into public debt. This situation is buttressed by extreme forms of intolerance. Policies of scapegoating based on hate and violence proliferate. In this way, the responsibility of dealing with the financial crisis is now put on backs of the most vulnerable sectors of the society, especially immigrants and minorities, protecting the real perpetrators behind a smokescreen held up by an unscrupulous media. If we know that the funds composing our debt were not employed for the benefit of our population at large, but were instead used, as in the case in many instances, for the accumulation of capital without thought towards environmental sustainability or fundamental human rights, is it still a moral obligation for citizens to pay off this debt? Faced with this situation, what can we do? We need to wake up to the fact that not all debt is legitimate and thus should not be repaid. For example, countries such as Argentina, Ecuador and Iceland have found ways to evade the payment of debt they consider to be illegitimate. We need to also educate ourselves, get involved and demand greater transparency surrounding budgets and debts, as well as how much money is lost due to tax exemptions for big capital. A citizen's audit of the debt is a tool that helps bring to light where a debt has come from, determine who is responsible for it and to distinguish what debts are illegitimate and shouldn't be paid. 
We have been led to believe that paying of the debt is a moral obligation. But we must ask ourselves, what type of morality equates the life of a person with a few sacks of seeds?